cold today, so uh, be, be gentle with me. Um, so what we're going to cover today, um, more on this period between printing and um, printing in the telegraph, uh, a period we're recalling the first uh, in the introductory class, we talked about the difference between a class in history of information and history of information technology. And uh, I said that if such classes are off, of course, are offered at all, they tend to jump from printing to the telegraph because nothing interesting happened in between. Um, well, a good deal happened um, if you're not focused exclusively on the technology. We'll talk about some of that. And in particular, the, the birth of what we're going to call the modern informational system. Um, some people call it print culture, but that's uh, a little restrictive. And Carla Hesse actually uses this term. She's a historian here uh, who's now very grand. What is she? The, the, the dean of everything. Uh, the, yeah. Dean of arts and sciences. Um, <clears throat> We'll talk a bit about um, uh, the material in the garden reading, the interpenetration of the spoken and the written uh, print, the coffee house, which you discussed in, in the reading, um, the spreading use of print, the emergence of the public, this interesting uh, and uh, very important concept uh, in talking about the, the history of information. And finally, a bit about the notion of news and, and public opinion, which is very closely related to that. Happy Valentine's Day. Sort of, uh, you've all bought flowers and chocolates for your sweethearts, I'm sure. Um, before that, I, there, there's a little institution we've had in this class. Let me make sure I can do this. Um, uh, I, I'm the only one who does it. Paul won't deign to do this, but it's, oh, I call it the teaser, right? I'm going to ask everyone's while at the beginning of the class, let me turn this off because it's not for posterity to know about. I have one other, but I'm going to skip it now. Um, so, <coughs> just had another one in case somebody didn't get it. Um, where are we? We're, um, we're in the um, 17th, early 18th centuries. Uh, in this period, I said, in which there was what we think of as an IT lull. Uh, there were no, none of the major inventions that retrospectively uh, people date as the beginning of an age, like the print age, the age of telegraphy, and so on. Um, that isn't to say that there wasn't lots of material change and technological change going on. <coughs> it was an age um, uh, that saw the growth of the, the nation state of commerce, and with it, um, the enormous improvement of, of modes of uh, communication and transportation, um, the great roads and the system of roads in uh, Western Europe, in, in, uh, in uh, um, uh, England, I should say, or Great Britain, um, uh, and, uh, and France was, was initiated in, in this period. Um, uh, canals uh, were built, which um, facilitated communication and commerce. When Napoleon, as a young man, a uh, young lieutenant in the artillery, uh, came first to Paris, uh, he took a, a canal boat that went from Burgundy, he was post stationed in Burgundy at the time, went from Burgundy up through various locks and so on. So it was enormously impatient because this thing moved very slowly at the pace of, at the, pace of the, the, uh, the, the horses or, or, or uh, donkeys who were, who were pulling it. Um, he was going to wait to get to Paris. Um, but <coughs> this whole system was built um, in the, uh, mostly this 18th and, 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 uh, and early 19th century. There were also lots of technological uh, innovations. Printing uh, was improved um, to an extraordinary extent. By the beginning of the 19th century, you have something like modern print. Um, uh, <coughs> navigation um, and, um, and uh, shipping uh, were changed. Uh, this item on the right, Paul, we'll talk about it. Anybody know what that is? It's a telegraph. Uh, it's a line of sight telegraph. The system was built in France um, uh, 50 years, 40, no, 70 years before the um, before Morse. Yeah, 50 years before Morse. Um, uh, that enabled um, uh, communication to take place. You know, in the course of several hours, you could communicate between um, if the, you know, the weather was right between uh, the south of France and, and Paris. And Paul will talk about that. Um, it's also the time uh, in which we see the emergence of what, as I say, I'm calling the modern informational system. Uh, Tim Blanning, a Cambridge historian, very well known Cambridge historian, uh, in a book on this period, kind of synthetic history of this period, wrote um, that many, if not most, of the cultural phenomena of the modern world date from the 18th century. In the 18th century, we're talking about the long 18th century, so to speak, which goes from the, the end of the 17th century to the, the early years of the, the, the 19th. The periodical, the newspaper, the novel, the journalist, the critic, the public library, the concert, the public museum, and I'll add, um, because there are things that interest me that we'll talk about, uh, advertising, Paul will be talking about, intellectual property, Paul will talk about, propaganda, uh, I will be talking about, um, the scientific society, science itself, Paul again, the modern dictionary and encyclopedia we'll cover next time. All of these institutes that we think of as part of our informational order, so to speak, whether museums or dictionaries, and encyclopedias, uh, IP, science, all of that emerges in this period. <coughs> and perhaps most important of all, uh, Blanning asked, it was then that public opinion came to be recognized as the ultimate arbiter in matters of taste and politics. Now, these are not unconnected. Uh, the emergence of all of these institutions and forms uh, depended on uh, the, the rise of this, this notion of the public. Uh, and of other things that went with it. This is the period in which capitalism uh, and modern commerce are, are, are instituted. The cities are growing at an extraordinary rate in this period. Literacy is increasing. Again, at an extraordinary rate. You can't, there's no point having newspapers that people can't read. And, and people do not, by and large, learn to read in order to read newspapers, uh, particularly at this stage. They're learning to read for other reasons because they want to work as clerks or they're working in service or something. Um, so all of this is going on. Uh, and supporting these, the changes in, in all these institutions, the emergence of these new institutions that we're going to think of as the modern informational system. <coughs> uh, the reason, as I say, that we're talking about an informational system rather than what's commonly referred to as print culture uh, is that, as Darton stresses and we're stressing, this was not a, a print society in the sense that that was the dominant uh, mode of communication. It was, to use a slightly anachronistic phrase, a multimedia uh, society. Um, 
there's a, a notion, like we used the word supersession in, uh, earlier on, supersession, uh, the, the notion that one technology replaces another, comes in and knocks out another. Um, uh, most famously uh, expressed in, in um, Victor Hugo's, uh, uh, in, in French, it's Notre-Dame de Paris, in, 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 uh, in, in, in French, it's Notre-Dame de Paris, in English, it's the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Uh, the Archdeacon, who's the villain of the piece, how many people have read or seen the movie, Lon Chaney, Charles Lawton, Richard, um, uh, oh, wait, I turn this on again, don't I? He's uh, standing in a print, a print, uh, a print room. Uh, this is in the, the 50, early, early days of, of print. He's standing in a print shop, room. and he looks at the um, uh, the, uh, the printed book on the table, and then stretches his arm toward uh, toward the cathedral of Notre Dame, and says, "Ceci tuera cela." This will kill that. Print will kill architecture or the the, the representation of a stained glass. It's not clear exactly what's, what's meant by that, but print is going to remove, destroy the medieval orders. What he's talking about, um, <coughs> and that expression, "This will kill that," is often used um, to describe not just the re- print replacing these medieval, the, the, whether you think of the image or. or our architecture, but any technology booting out another one. And sometimes that's true. I mean, most of you have never seen a Betamax, right? Because it was replaced by, by other technologies. But in a larger sense, in, in terms of these major modes of communication, that's rarely the case. Um, and that's the point, of course, that um, uh, uh, Darton was talking about in, in this article, where he says it makes no sense to separate printed from oral and written modes of communication, um, as we casually do when we speak of print culture, because they were all bound together in a multimedia system. Um, I thought I'd move this slide, but uh, let, me, let me just mention it. Uh, no, I'm going to come back to this slide, if, if, if I remember to. Uh, so that was the assignment uh, for this time, uh, in the light of Darn's discussion of the various ways in which information was circulated in the old regime. Um, how have you kept yourself informed about the Berkeley crisis of the Berkeley situation? I, I first gave this assignment last year because everybody was in a tizzy about it. Evidently, from looking at the responses, you're less, you just resigned yourself to paying, you know, to, to being in debt for the, to, until you're 70 years old and, and uh, aren't as um, uh, concerned about it. Um, but you have learned about it in a number of different ways. Um, and the question was, uh, how, how much is the way in which you've informed yourself about this situation, like uh, the way in which people found out about Louis XV uh, in, in the France of the Ancien Regime, and, and how's it different? So uh, a few of the answers. Allison, would you, you just explain your, your answer? Right now? So in both cases, you're saying it's, 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 it requires an act of volition on the part of the, if you don't want to know, you don't have to know. Um, unless it's a question of, say, Whitney Houston dying, which would be very hard. Anybody here hasn't heard that Whitney Houston? How, how long did it take people to, to find that out? Um, 20 minutes, 40 minutes? Your roommate said, hey. Um, Amelia. Yeah. Um, um, so you said that Whitney Houston was the first person to find So you think of um, uh, YouTube and uh, what was the other one? Um, uh, YouTube video and, and, and as, as more like. And the idea here is that I go on, I make, a, I make a YouTube video, and I say I think it's terrible what the reasons are doing or something like that, and then I, I send a link to other people or post it on my Facebook page, and is that? And you think of that as more like? I'm not, I'm not challenging. So I'm gonna get straight. Uh, you think of it as more like an oral communication than like a public communication, than like posting something on a, on a wall or. or And it's oral because, because it is oral, because it's, we're speaking, and that's the, uh, the crucial item. So YouTube, uh, uh, Facebook's not oral communication, or email's not. Because I'm not hearing it. Right. So, that, so that's for you, the crucial thing. It's active, active hearing it is, is the crucial thing. Um, uh, <coughs> Janet? Janet Lee? Oh, hi, okay. <laughs> yeah, can you speak up just a little bit? And that's I mean, it's very interesting. The, 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 uh, the flyer is as close as anything we have to a you know, 17th century mode of communication. It hasn't changed at all. It, 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 these things out. So it's a means whereby people can, who have no power, can nonetheless distribute their, uh, make, make their, thoughts, their thoughts known. Um, uh, you say that the information I received through online news and email has no equivalent um, in, in the 18th century. So you think email is something... Mm-hmm. So email just comes to you. Oh, there was mail then, of course, but it wasn't. You couldn't just, you know, just send, send a message to uh, to 700 people on a, on a, on a, a mailing list and have it anything. Right. In, 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 in France of the, of, the, uh, of the 17th and 18th century, if a friend of mine ate chili for dinner, I had to wait days to find out about it. Now, on Twitter, I know where I went. <laughs> Thank God. Um, Sophia. Or Sophia. Sophia. Mm-hmm. 
So as opposed to Amelia, who thought that, who, who tended to consider the um, uh, oral was just oral for, for her, and wanted to make that the distinction there, you would rather make a distinction in terms of informality, is that? So, so a Twitter feed is oral for you, I mean, it's, it's the equivalent of a, it's best compared to an oral communication in, in, in 70s, 80s, 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 80s,